Yes, thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation to speak today, and uh, obviously thank you very much to the moderators as well. So obviously we mentioned we're going to be speaking about preoperative care characteristics and their role in prolonged intubation following abdominal wall reconstruction. Uh, disclosure, uh, I'm Boston Scientific Consultant, uh, but this uh, is not pertinent to uh, this lecture. So obviously with the significant advancements in abdominal wall reconstruction, it has allowed us to uh, repair surgically more complex, larger abdominal wall hernias. However, those repairs can have some detrimental effects on the pulmonary system, at least in the fairly acute post-operative stage. Measurements of intra-abdominal uh, pressure has demonstrated after following ventral hernia repair has been demonstrated utilizing balloon-tipped catheters and also urinary catheters. And that has also demonstrated a significant uh, elevation and creation of intra-abdominal hypertension as well. So what is the importance of that is the fact that intra-abdominal pressure itself or intra-abdominal hypertension can also have physiological changes and detrimental uh, effects on the pulmonary system as well. It's demonstrated a decrease in chest wall compliance and also functional residual capacity. And clinically or physically, uh, it has also been demonstrated to uh, create atelectasis as well as some alteration in blood oxygenation uh, transition. More importantly as well is also a change in plateau pressure, plateau pressure being the actual pressure and the amount of air required to keep your uh, deep lung spaces such as your alveoli open. And again, this intradominal hypertension has showed an increase in this plateau pressure. More importantly, this, it, the, the studies done by uh, Blatnik et al., you know, in which he evaluated 60 patients who underwent uh, abdominal wall reconstruction with prosthetic mesh, uh, has demonstrated that the, uh, there's a 20% incidence rate in terms of respiratory complications postoperatively. And even across the majority of the literature, uh, that rate has been pretty standard, about 15 to 20%. Why is this important? Why should we be studying this? Postoperatively, looking at respiratory complications, they've been demonstrated in the previous data to have uh, be associated with prolonged hospital stays, prolonged mechanical ventilation, as well as higher level of nursing care requirements. And why is that important is the fact that if you're looking at ventral hernia patients, especially those with a diagnosis of respiratory failure and mechanical ventilation, they've demonstrated a four-fold greater length of stay, and probably even more importantly or more concerning, there's an 18-fold greater death rate among these patients as well. Fisher et al. also evaluated 134 patients undergoing abdominal wall reconstruction over five years, and they also demonstrated not only is there a clinical detrimental effect on this, but also there's a financial ramifications as well. They demonstrated postoperative uh, respiratory failure in these patients added an additional cost of just below $61,000 per patient. And again, that only included direct hospital costs. It also didn't include any uh, overhead or labor costs as well. So the purpose of the study was obviously to determine if there are specific preoperative characteristics that are indicators for postoperative respiratory failure, but also more importantly, are they uh, modifiable? Can we change something in order to improve the outcome of these patients and limit their postoperative respiratory failure? So the methods for our study, we, uh, we utilize the uh, National Surgical Quality Improvement Program. We used the data from 2015 to 2013. And those patients were initially weeded out. We looked at uh, for ventral hernias and incisional hernias using, using RCD9 codes. And then furthermore, once we obtained those patients, we further stratified them down to abdominal wall reconstruction utilizing um, the CBT code, obviously, for uh, component separation, which is 15734. Solution criteria included patients less than 18 years old. If there was any missing data, obviously, those patients were removed. Uh, any patients who were ventilated preoperatively, and of course, non-elective patients. Furthermore, in terms of our endpoint, prolonged intubation is what we were looking for. We define this as ventilatory dependency for more than 48 hours, and that definition itself is also very specific to the database as well. And then furthermore, once we obtain our data, multivariable logistic regression was utilized to control for their patient demographics, and furthermore, any odds ratios uh, and also 95% in confident intervals were obviously reported. So what did we find? We found that 448 patients were identified. Of these patients, 3% or 130 or 133 of them did experience prolonged intubation. This was obviously a little bit less in regards to uh, the, the quoted data, but we feel that probably our, the reason why is because our definition was very specific to the 48 hours postoperatively. Comparing the prolonged intubation group to the non-intubation group, we demonstrated that obviously there were some significant differences there in terms of the characteristics. Uh, those patients with ASA scores um, were obviously uh, more significant. Uh, also, clean wound did have look like a protective effect, which was shown in a moment. 
the dyspnea itself was obviously plays an important role as well. And those patients with prolonged intubation had a significant history of dyspnea. And then obviously smoker status was also even higher in the prolonged intubation group. So all this makes obvious sense. After performing our multivariable uh, regression analysis, though, we just demonstrated that there are a few variables are, that are very specific and also in terms of the prolonged intubation group. We just demonstrated that the history of severe COPD has an odds ratio of 1.79. ASA score had an odds ratio of 1.76. The clean wound actually demonstrated a significant uh, protective benefit as well with an odds ratio of 0 0.3. Current smoker obviously plays a role at an odds ratio of 1.96. And also your BMI greater than 40, 2.2. And again, these scores are obviously uh, statistically significant. Limitations, of course, is the fact that this is, uh, you know, it's a retrospective, uh, prospective collected database, a retrospective review in nature. I don't have any information in regards to the defect size, which has demonstrated previous data to be associated with prolonged intubation. Um, also, the intraop airway bladder pressures were not known. And of course, I can't follow these patients beyond 30 days as the database only goes out that far. So what do we find? Again, history of severe COPD, aspirin, current smoker, BMI over 40, all these, and again, clean wound, all of them have been significantly uh, associated with this. Most importantly, though, is if you look at current smoker or BMI over 40, these are modifiable, meaning that we have the ability to perform smoking cessation, nicotine testing, so that you can eliminate smoking as a variable preoperatively. And then, of course, for the BMI, you can do medical nutritional support, surgical invention, even endoscopic intervention. You know, for patients who may, who may not want intervention, you can certainly do balloons, endoscopic, endoscopic sleeves are obviously becoming, as we'll probably learn more in the lectures here this week, are also a new option that's available to us. Looking at clean wound, this also makes sense. What's the protective benefit is the fact that if the, if the wound was clean, you're not gonna have the post-operative surgical site infections, you're probably not gonna have uh, no need, you know, need to reintubate to take them back to the OR, there's less recurrence rates, and of course, the way that you can improve your clean wound is, again, operate on patients with lower BMIs, eliminate smoking, uh, and then further, COPD, though itself not modifiable, obviously you want to optimize these patients uh, prior to surgery as well. That's it. Thank you very much. Take any questions.